Greetings and welcome. My name is Dr. Cherry Esalom, and I am here to go over Gilliland's Crisis Six Step Model. All right, let's get started. Gilliland's Six Step Model um, is a client led model that has a purpose of making sure that the power is given back to the client. And we do this by helping them regain a sense of empowerment and to have confidence in their decision-making abilities. An additional benefit um, of the client-led model is that the increased likelihood that the client will follow through with a plan if they have created it for themselves rather than one that was created for them. So it's definitely a collaborative, a collaborative effort and you wanna make sure that the client feels in control because they were the one who helped create the plan that they are comfortable with, okay? So this collaborative model is designed to empower the client in order for them to regain control of their autonomy. Um, this kind of model is really, really good for situational crisis, especially in situations like sexual assault. And so you have this six stage model and the model is actually broken up into two portions. You have the listening portion and you have the action portion. Um, the entire model with the two portions has six different stages. There are three stages for the listening portion and then there are three stages for the action portion. The three stages for the listening portion include the client defining the problem, what is really going on, ensuring the client's safety, and then number three, providing resource, resources and verbal support. So again, that's the client defining the problem. Remember, you don't want to define it for them because what you might think is the problem is not necessarily what they perceive the problem to be. So the client defining the problem, you want to ensure the client's safety, both physical and emotional. And then you want to provide resources and verbal support. So then when you finish the listening portion, after you're building this rapport, you move on to the action portion. And the three steps in the action portion are making sure that the client is able to examine alternatives for the client situations. What are some of the other alternatives that we can use in order to move forward in the midst of this crisis? So the fourth one for, or the first one for action, but the fourth one in this stage is examining alternatives. The fifth step in this, in this uh, sequence of the six step model is this also considered the second step of the action portion, which is making plans. This one is really important because you want the client to come up with a concrete and well-defined plan. In other words, you want to kind of use SMART goals. What are some of the steps that they can actually use in order to assist them in moving forward? And remember, they should come up with this plan. You can give them some ideas, um, but you really want them to be the ones to come up with this plan. So you definitely want to make sure that they're empowered enough to create this plan. And then the last step of the six step model is obtaining a commitment. You want to obtain a commitment from the client, right? They should come up with something that is going to be their ultimate goal. Like I said, you can give them ideas, um, but you definitely want them to come up with the final step, obtaining the commitment. They should be the collaborative person leading the you know, leading the charge in all six of these steps. This is definitely a collaborative crisis model. And so if we go back and we look at the listening portion, I want you to understand that the goal is to establish a strong rapport while allowing the client to open up and feel comfortable disclosing events of the trauma and the crisis. So you want to be a good listener in the listening portion. You want to build that rapport. You want them to feel like they can trust you and they can talk to you about some of the things that have caused them so much trauma. During the first three steps, the client will be encouraged to identify the buildup of stressors that has led to this trauma and identify the direction that therapy will go, right? So you really want them to take the lead. And they again, they should be able to identify these stressors, identify any obstacles, um, and you want them to identify how they want to navigate 
their time in therapy. And so the counselor will use all this information um, that you get during the listening portion. You're going to take in all this information. You might ask a lot of clarifying questions. You want to take all this information in order to determine the client's perspective. Remember, I want you guys to remember that word. What is the client's perspective and determine what resources the client will need, right? So you want to make sure that you're such a good listener that you're able to then try to find a way that you can support them through this. One of my favorite questions that I always ask my clients is how can I support you right now? And so they may not know, but sometimes they will. You know, they might say, I just need to sit here for a moment. If that's what they need, let's give them that space to just sit there for a moment. When you get to the action portion, um, again, the goal is to give the choices back to the client. So when you follow the three steps of the listener, then you will you know, work with the client as you guys are going through the action. Again, keep in mind, the client should always lead this pathway to their healing. They should lead to a very specific plan that they can shoot to attain, okay? Uh, this model is really, really good for situational crisis, especially something like a sexual assault. And so when Gilliland looked at this model, he considered the fact that sexual assault victims often feel powerless and out of control following their assault. And so a lot of researchers have found that it was important for victims to regain control after a sexual assault has robbed them from their autonomy. Now, you can use this model um, for other situations other than sexual assault, but Gilliland wanted to kind of be clear that this is the kind of model that will work really well with this, again, because you're re-empowering the client. They didn't have a choice when they were sexually violated. They didn't have a choice. And so this model puts the choice back in their lap, and they let them, and this model helps, you know, let them know that they still can be in control of how they move forward, okay? I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or if something wasn't clear, please do not hesitate to comment below and let me know if I can answer anything or if I can go back and clarify something, all right? I hope this helps. I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you for listening, bye.